Help for the family, marriage, how to show respect. The challenge. The husband says, when we got married, my wife and I had different views on what it meant to show respect. Not that one view was right and the other was wrong, they were just different. I often felt that my wife should have been more respectful in the way she spoke to me. The wife says, part of the culture in which I was raised included speaking loudly, using dramatic facial expressions, and interrupting when others were speaking. We didn't view that as disrespectful, but that's a completely different atmosphere from the one in which my husband was raised. Respect in a marriage is not a luxury, it's a necessity. How can you show that you respect your mate? What you should know. Men have a particular need for respect. The Bible tells husbands, each one of you must love his wife as he does himself. But then it adds, the wife should have deep respect for her husband. While both wives and husbands need to feel loved and respected, husbands especially thrive on respect. Men need to feel like they can handle situations, solve problems, and take care of the family, says a husband named Carlos. When a wife respects her husband for such capabilities, she benefits not only her husband, but also herself. My husband actually shows his love for me more when I show that I respect him, says a wife named Corinne. Of course, wives need respect too. That makes sense, because a husband cannot truly love a wife whom he does not respect. I need to respect my wife's opinions and suggestions, says Daniel. I also need to respect her emotions. My not understanding why she feels a certain way does not mean that I can dismiss how she feels. Respect is in the eye of the beholder. The issue is not whether you think you show respect, but whether your mate feels respected. This is a lesson learned by the wife, quoted at the outset under the heading, The Challenge. Even if I didn't think I was being disrespectful, if I made my husband feel that I was, then I was the one who needed to change. What you can do. Write down three things that you admire about your husband or wife. The admirable traits that you identify can be the foundation upon which to build respect. For one week, track your conduct, not that of your spouse, in the following areas. Your words. One study of couples found that spouses in happy, stable marriages made five positive remarks for every one negative remark when they were discussing conflict. In contrast, couples headed for divorce offered less than one 0 0.8, positive remark for every single negative remark. Ask yourself, do I speak respectfully to my mate? How often do I criticize compared with how often I compliment? What is the tone of my voice when I have an observation or a complaint? Would your spouse agree with your answers? Try this. Set a goal to give your husband or wife at least one compliment per day. Suggestion. Look back at the admirable traits you identified earlier. Get into the habit of telling your mate what you admire about him or her. Your actions. A wife named Alyssa says, I spend a lot of time doing housework, and when my husband respects my efforts by picking up after himself or washing his own dishes, I feel that my efforts are worthwhile and that I'm important to our marriage. Ask yourself, does the way I treat my spouse clearly convey my respect? Do I give my spouse adequate time and attention? Would your spouse agree with your answers? Try this. Write down three ways that you would like to be shown respect. Have your mate do the same. Then exchange lists so that each of you can work on showing respect in the areas that were specified. Focus on your own need to show respect. When one takes the lead, the other's likely to follow. Key Scriptures Thoughtless speech is like the stabs of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is a healing. Continue putting up with one another, even if anyone has a cause for complaint. Love builds up. Brian and Serena. A wife should be valued for more than physical things, such as the work she does around the house. She also needs to know that she is respected and valued for her qualities. Brian. Austin and Carly. Without respect, you would not have a marriage, or at least not a happy one. All you would be left with is the resentment and insecurity that you both felt. Carly. Some names in this article have been changed. The Extraordinary Clownfish Few fish grab our attention the way the clownfish does. Perhaps it wins our hearts with its fancy coloring, which may remind us of a circus clown. Or maybe we're struck by its surprising choice of home among the stinging tentacles of a sea anemone. Not surprisingly, another name for the clownfish is an enemy fish. Like many Hollywood actors, clownfish are not averse to photographs. 
divers and snorkelers can usually expect clownfish to pose for pictures, since they rarely stray far from home and are not particularly shy. But what makes clownfish extraordinary is their seemingly risky lifestyle. Living among poisonous tentacles would seem to be comparable to setting up home in a nest of serpents. Still, clownfish and their anemone of choice are inseparable. What makes this strange partnership possible and successful? I cannot live without you. Like most good partnerships, clownfish and anemones give and take. The relationship is not merely convenient for the clownfish, it's vital. Marine biologists have confirmed that clownfish cannot live in the wild without a host anemone. They are poor swimmers and would be at the mercy of the hungry predators without the anemone's protection. However, by using the anemone as a home base and as a safe shelter when threatened, the clownfish may reach 10 years of age. The anemone provides a safe nesting site as well as a home. The clownfish deposit their eggs at the base of the host anemone, where both parents keep careful watch over them. Later, the clownfish family can be seen swimming around that same anemone. What does the anemone get out of this relationship? The clownfish serve as marine bodyguards, driving away butterfly fish that like to feed on anemone tentacles. At least one species of anemone cannot live without resident clownfish. When researchers removed the clownfish, within just 24 hours, the anemone had disappeared completely. Apparently, butterfly fish had consumed them. It seems that the clownfish even provide their host with energy. The ammonium that clownfish excrete helps spur growth in the host anemone, and as the clownfish swim among the tentacles, they help circulate oxygen-rich water to the anemone. Going where others fear to swim. In the case of the clownfish, protection is skin deep. They have mucus on their skin that keeps them from being stung. Thanks to this chemical coating, it seems the anemone considers the clownfish one of its own. As a marine biologist put it, the clownfish becomes a fish in an anemone's clothing. Some studies suggest that when selecting a new host, the clownfish has to go through a process of adaptation. It has been observed that when the fish approaches an anemone for the first time, it touches the anemone intermittently for a few hours. Apparently, this on and off contact allows the clownfish to modify its protective coating to conform to the new anemone's particular poison. Possibly, the clownfish gets stung a little during the process, but after that, the two get along fine. The collaboration of such different creatures offers a fascinating lesson in teamwork. In so many human endeavors, people from diverse cultures and backgrounds achieve remarkable results by pooling their resources. Like the clownfish, we may take a little time to adapt to working with others, but the results are well worth it. The Bible's Viewpoint, Punctuality Punctuality. Many who appreciate the value of punctuality struggle with tardiness themselves. The Bible provides practical wisdom related to this subject. How important is punctuality? Why it matters? Some have found that arriving at appointments a bit ahead of time actually reduces stress. Punctuality also enhances a person's reputation. How so? Punctuality indicates competence. When you are on time, it shows that you try to be in control of your life instead of allowing circumstances to prevent you from doing things you want to do. Punctuality suggests dependability. In a society where promises are often broken and commitments frequently ignored, people appreciate those who stick to their word. Dependable people earn respect from friends and family. Employers value those who arrive on time for work and meet deadlines. Dependable workers may even be rewarded with a higher salary and greater trust. What the Bible says. There are passages in the scripture that relate to punctuality. For instance, the Bible says, let all things take place decently and by arrangement. When two parties agree to meet at a specific time and place, it is decent and proper for them to be punctual. The Bible also says, there is an appointed time for everything, a time for every activity under the heavens. The context of this verse says that there is a time to plant and a time to uproot. Farmers plant crops at the right time, on time, in order to yield the best possible harvest. In other words, the farmer's punctuality yields good results. The Bible reveals a more noble reason for being punctual. It shows respect for others and their precious time. By contrast, those who constantly make others wait could in effect be stealing their time. Look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. What can you do to be punctual? What the Bible says. The Bible encourages advanced planning. If you find that you are regularly late for appointments, perhaps your schedule's too full. Why not cut non-essential time wasters? Schedule more time between appointments and aim to arrive early. 
This will allow for unexpected circumstances, such as traffic congestion or bad weather. The Bible also encourages modesty. This means knowing your limitations. Decide whether an appointment or deadline will realistically fit your schedule before agreeing to it. By overbooking, you add stress and frustration to yourself and to others. The Bible further tells us to make the best use of our time. Give priority to the most important tasks. For example, while using public transportation or waiting for others, take advantage of the time by catching up on reading or planning the rest of your day. The plans of the diligent surely lead to success. Find more help for families at www.jw.org. Er, I mean, www.cash4chunkers.com. Sex is a gift from God, and in the right circumstances, in marriage, it can be a source of great pleasure. Let your child know that in time, he or she may be able to enjoy that gift without the heartache and worries that come from premarital sex.